When you think of the name Dave Mason, you think of traffic, you think of his time with Fleetwood Mac because he was brought in to replace Lindsey Buckingham, partly in that band. It was the one of the least favorable periods of Fleetwood Mac, but I personally really liked it. A little change of flavor. He's worked with George Harrison and Paul McCartney, Jimi Hendrix. But do you think Michael Jackson when you think of Dave Mason? And how did Dave Mason get Michael Jackson to sing along with him on one of his songs? That's coming up on Rock History Music. So, uh, you know, I know the story about a lot of people have asked me. I asked last night on my Facebook page about, you know, questions for you. And what came up a lot, of course, and I was familiar with it. I remember Save Me. Um, I know you've told the story a million times and they did perform that particular song, not Save Me, uh, one of yours on uh, Dinah Ross's special in 71. Um, so did you just walk over while they were recording their album and say, hey, I need a, you said you needed a high voice? Oh, uh, Michael Jackson? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just need, I needed a, a, a high part of the song Save Me and uh, Michael was on a break and just yeah, come on. I said, would you be up for coming and singing on this part for me? And that's he was told, you know, related the story about the um, Diana Ross show and said, sure, absolutely. Be happy to. <laughs> so, well, speaking of, what was he like? Quiet? All, all, I mean, I, all I really had him there for was to sing on that thing. I mean, he was just, he was he, he did more than I thought he was going to do, and he just was great. Just sort of came in, did it, and went back to his session. <laughs> you know, so. during, if that would have been d released during Thriller, and I know it's been said many times, I think Song Facts said it, that if that song would have been released, that would have been a huge hit. People would have at least given it a chance and listened to it. Yeah, just but the problem was that it was on an album that was at the end of my sh shit with Columbia and Columbia was just there was nobody at that company anymore that was going to do anything I mean they got rid of Clive they got rid of you know anybody that was a good you know the, the problem the problem was was that America you know went to this stupid consensus you know we all got into this consensus like everybody's got an opinion everybody's got a nose but there's no one guy running. Back in the old days, the record record company it was you had one guy who was just a great record guy. It was a rebel who said, "Okay, here I'm. This is what I'm going to. I'm doing this. Sh move the whole company." Um, that just went away. That went away. You know, there was no. It was like I said. It all became consensus. Didn't we Clive had, bring you into that deal? Clive brought you in, right? Huh? Clive brought you in, but then he was gone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of leaves you in a lurch. Well, that was the story. You know, you that was the story with lots of, of, of a lot of things in the record business. You'd be there, you'd make, you know, there was a great, I mean, there's a great, like, with the Wall Street Journal does an article on every issue that's in the center. It's usually down right in the center, and it's some. It's got something to do with something. And they had one that was in the center. It was about the music business. And this was back in the, uh, I think back in the early eighties or something around that time. And this article, and it had, basically what it came down to is this: is this two percent of every single record put out by every single label makes money? The other 80%, the other 98%. So 2% is supporting the entire industry. That's basically, I got so much shit on the shelves. I mean, you get signed by somebody, some, some act could get signed by somebody. They'd make an album, they do a thing, the guy would be gone. And that'd be the end of that project. It goes and shit shell because there's nobody behind it pushing it, you know. So that's, kind of the state of the union these you know these days there's no it, what it used to be and what it is now is just um the only thing that's not changed and the only thing that we still have left is playing live 
isn't it amazing? <laughs> he needs a high voice for a song. And he goes over and asks Michael Jackson while he was recording with his brothers. And Michael said, yeah, okay. And it's a great, if you don't know the tune, look it up. It's called Save Me. If you want to pre-order Dave Mason's brand new autobiography, the links are in the description directly to where you can order the book. It's coming out probably in May. I do believe there are signed copies available as well. Signed copy from a former member of Fleetwood Mac and a unforgettable member of Traffic. You can make a donation to Rocky Street Music right at the very top. There's a link to that on PayPal. Join our Patreon and you'll get early access to our videos. But like our videos, comment on them. I love reading your comments. Subscribe to the channel and share what you can on social media. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself. Thank you.